Now, any of you who have watched these videos in the past or who are going to look at the, the back ones in the future, uh, you'll see my best friend on there, which was uh, Sadie Thompson, my golden retriever. And Sadie passed away uh, this summer uh, at home. She was uh, 13 years and seven months old, and she was my first puppy, uh, first dog ever, and uh, a great friend and a great ambassador to uh, Emery Thompson. Uh, a couple of things about Sadie. Uh, before I picked her up at the breeder up in Massachusetts, yeah, she was a Boston fan too, my New York Yankees. Uh, before I picked her up, I had a name, and I was going to call her, and did call her, Sexy Sadie Thompson. Now, Sexy Sadie Thompson isn't just a name I pulled out of the hat. It was actually back to about the 1880s uh, when Boss Tweed ran New York City. Boss Tweed was very famous. He was also very crooked, a uh, big drinker. And uh, it's reported and pretty well accurate that while Boss Tweed, was, Boss Tweed was off at the bars and having a grand old time in New York City, uh, his prostitute, I guess we can say that because we're on uh, cable, uh, his prostitute, Sadie Thompson, sexy Sadie Thompson, ran New York City. She dealt with the police unions, the fire, the sanitation, the budgets. Sadie ran the New York City. So I named my dog after that. I get up to the breeder and uh, I say the name is Sadie Thompson. They said, well, uh, for AKC, uh, American Kennel Club, you have to have a middle name. I thought, uh, gee, uh, I don't know a lot of middle names. Um, Sadie Thompson, what's, what's a good middle name? And I thought of one of my daughters, her middle name is Lee, L-E-I-G-H. So I said, okay, we'll use the middle name Lee. And the lady, the breeder, turned to me and she said, you are not going to call one of my dogs Sarah Lee. And I thought for a second, I said, why not? Everybody loves Sarah. Nobody doesn't like Sarah Lee. But she made me change it, so we changed it to Jane. Um, Sadie went to work in the Bronx, the South Bronx, where our factory was. And uh, as a puppy, I used to carry her up the three flights of stairs to the office. And I kept carrying her up the three flights. And uh, one day, one of my employees uh, said, uh, hey, Estebi, that's a dog. She can walk. And, and I, I didn't think about it, but she was now 45 pounds. And I'm carrying her up the stairs like this. So uh, she grew up in the factory, of course, coming home at night and was an integral part of this business. I'm pleased to report. I'm very sad about that, of course. But I'm also pleased to report that uh, Paul and I went up to Bedford, New York, and uh, a couple of weeks ago, met with Good Time Golden Retrievers. And Good Time Golden Retrievers is a, a beautiful place, a beautiful uh, location. Um, and the breeder's mother also has Good Time Goldens, uh, Golden Retrievers uh, down in Georgia. And uh, I'll be going up in a couple of weeks and picking up Samantha Jane Thompson. And we'll call her Sammy. So, in future videos, you're going to get to meet little Sammy and see how she grows. So let's get started and make some ice cream.
Hi, I'm Steve Thompson, president of Emory Thompson Machinery, and welcome to Make It Fresh. This is our continuing series of DVDs, uh, YouTubes that we've put together over the last three and a half years to teach you everything about uh, homemade ice cream, Italian ices, gelato, sorbet, sorbetto, frozen lemonade, everything that the Emory Thompson batch freezers can do. Uh, I believe this will be the start of our 125th hour. And uh, so what I would like to do is uh, introduce you as we start to uh, three people who you'll be talking to besides me when you call up here. Paul and Connie, come on in. And Crystal, come on up. They, they don't have microphones on because I don't want you to hear what they might say about me. <laughs> uh, this is Paula Thompson, my wife, uh, office manager, Connie is uh, uh, Connie Dominguez is our senior uh, accountant and uh, Crystal Delion I got it right Crystal Delion is just joining us today for the first time she'll be uh, assistant to uh, Connie and Paula and when you place part orders you'll most likely be talking to Crystal so these are the people that you'll be dealing with uh, anytime you call we pride ourselves in uh, racing to the phone we uh, have an answering machine but it's almost never used uh, but it, when it does get used, if we're so busy and it gets used, your call goes to my computer screen no matter where I am. So I know who's called in, uh, the phone number at least, and uh, I will call you right back. But we don't believe in answering machines. We don't want you to have to wait. You're going to get a live person when you call here. So it's always a race. Uh, usually it boils down to between Connie and me. Who can grab the phone faster? So you're... <laughs> so you're very likely uh, to get me on the phone or any one of the three ladies and we'll do our best to help you if you ever need engineering or technical support we put you right on with an engineer uh, this is the way we run our business we're a family business so crystal welcome and uh, if you'll please get back to work okay. Crystal, <laughs> crystal's going to stay with us and learn how to make ice cream this is new to her and who's the guy standing oh to yeah your right? i forgot <laughs> This is tie-dye Jeff. He doesn't have his tie-dye shirt on, but he's uh, world infamous and uh, always award-seeking. And what? Uh, and what? Award-seeking. Award-seeking. <laughs> award-seeking. And uh, Jeff and I have been doing this for about three and a half years, I think it is, and are close to it. And uh, we're going to teach you what we know about, oh, the little baby's clapping in the back. Yay! A fan club. There's a beautiful baby in the back. You mean back in that first balcony? Yeah, the first balcony. Um, first thing we're going to make is a coconut gelato. And we're making that because Paula absolutely loves it. And so she asked me to make more. So I'm going to use the bigger machine today, Jeff. And uh, nowadays we're in a, uh, the buzzwords are environmentally friendly propellant. That's a fancy name for Freon gas. It's in your refrigerator, it's in your car. It's called uh, R404A, environmentally friendly propellant. That's what gets the barrel cold. And so I'll just show you, when I turn this on, um, within seconds, this barrel will get cold already. It's freezing up. Jack, can you zoom in on this? I'll get out of the way for a second. Jack's in the back room there running the cameras. And Ken is out, is our IT department, which is in Houston, and uh, Ken is tuned in today, too. So, if I blow into the cylinder, my hot breath will show up the Freon lines. We've wrapped this barrel in copper tubing from front to back, and that's my source of cold instead of rock, salt, and ice. But we're making the coconut, and um, this calls for the base. The base we buy from a dairy, and it's what you would do at home, but it's, it's simpler. And there's a lot of legal reasons we can go into later, but this is nothing more than milk, cream, skim milk, and sugar. I'm blind in one eye, and I never miss. Okay, so that's my dairy blend. Milk, cream, sugar, skim milk. I'm gonna put in three ounces of vanilla extract. Vanilla extract just bolsters the flavor of almost anything. I've got two cans of Coco Lopez. So I'm just pouring that in. So instead of using some blend that's been sitting in a big can and uh, you, know, you don't know what's in it, I'm using a, a fresher product. Just let that drain for a second. And then I'm going to turn it on, 
And I'm going to do uh, what I call homemade ice cream. And I'm starting the rotation. And now I'm going to turn on the refrigeration right away because I want to get going. And I'll set a timer. Which uh, this is shredded coconut, uh, which uh, I didn't think I would like. But then when you it's sweet. And when you taste it, it's, it's delicious. Our machines, nuts, cookies, bananas. You'll see all sorts of stuff going in today. And that's freezing. So what I'm looking for is to open it up and close it and see how it's cutting off like a knife went through it. Jack, can you zoom in on this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See how it cuts off? That's ready. It just cuts off like a knife went through it. Now, I'm going to turn off the refrigeration. I don't want it to get any colder. And then watch how fast this comes out. That's a beautiful product. Isn't that nice? And I'll pull the rest here. Now, with all the uh, sugar is an inhibitor to freezing. So vanilla ice cream can be done. Um, vanilla ice cream can be done in about eight minutes. The higher the sugar content of a product, the longer it takes to freeze. So strawberry ice cream might take 10 minutes because the strawberries are bringing extra sugar to the formula. That Coco Lopez that we used in the cream of coconut, that's just pure sugar. And so that affects the looks of the freezing and the uh, time it takes. So this is ready. Oh, and what I did was when I was finished, I just uh, took the speed up to the max just to help push the rest of the product out. So uh, come on up and we'll serve you if we can find a spatula. Come on, everybody up. Everybody up. We, we don't uh, we don't do uh, to the table service. Oh, you want to do this? Uh, no, whatever you want. We'll both do it. We're gonna make the banana, uh, and we pass. I pass it out the banana uh, cream ice, and this calls for three pounds of ripe bananas, which I've got. And oh, you can just. I'll take care of this. All right, just don't break them. I want to put them in whole. Um, I've got the water, uh, bananas. I need the one and a half pounds of sugar. Do I have one and a half pounds of sugar yet? Right there. Where? Where? Where's one and a half right pounds here. of sugar? Okay. Now, watch this. You put it into the water. You put the lime in the coconut um, and stir it right up. Sugar dissolves very easily in cold water. So, I'm going to pour this in. And I'm using the CB350. Let me pull this out. Okay, my sugar and water is in here. I'm going to get this started because I'm on a timeline. I hit Italian ice. Hit start. That gets it spinning. I'm going to turn on the refrigeration. Now my product is freezing. Let's set a timer. Set it for uh, 12 minutes. You see how I just keep knocking this along? Uh, now I'm going to put in 24 ounces of heavy cream. That's what's going to make it. This is ice cream mix? Yeah. Okay. I had heavy cream, but I like this better. The godfather of, of cream ice is a guy named uh, Larry Stefano up in New York, Ralph's Italian Ices. And let me get this in and I'll tell you about it. Three ounces of lemon juice. Now, what you can't do on any other machine in the world is we're just going to drop some bananas down in here. And I need my spatula. Oh, yeah. You're going to like this. Smooth and creamy. If I take two minutes to get this product out, it's not going to be consistent. The second half of the product is going to be completely different from the first. So with Emory Thompson's, the way I designed the guards, actually uh, Slade Harmon, our chief engineer, designed it. This comes out very fast. Now that's the consistency of wet cement. You put this in any other machine, and if it doesn't void your warranty, it'll certainly ruin the machine in a couple years. But this is designed to take it. 
Now this was a Malcolm Stogo recipe um, that I followed exactly, so we'll see how it comes out and see how you like it. But look how fast that came out. Isn't that beautiful? So come on up and try this. Here we go. Is that your end? Yeah. Some flavors are really hard to do. Uh, mango can get pretty tough to get, and mango has become a very popular flavor. This company is called I Rice. That's the letter I, period, and then R I C E, out of Philadelphia. The president is Steve Cool, K U H L, good guy. And uh, is Rod he the guy Or. That used to come here and guest speak? Oh, that was Rod Oranger. Rod Oranger. Rod Oranger is the uh, sales manager and a, a wonderful person. Asked for Rod Oranger. And they sell this base, which has got first ingredient is high fructose corn syrup, followed by sugar, water, and then mango puree. Uh, so it's got, you know, in, in the best of all possible worlds, it's got some things in here I wouldn't want high fructose corn syrup. But the demand, you, you're in business to make money, and the demand is we want mango, and we want well, a lot of mango. I, I was just going to say that um, how long it lasts, they give you an expiration date, but how long it lasts, surprisingly, is how cold your refrigerator is. If you bring home milk from the supermarket and your refrigerator is at 37, 38 degrees, it's going to last uh, about four days. If you take your refrigerator down to about 34, you almost double the length of time that it'll uh, stay, which is pretty incredible. There's a different pasteurization method. We see it more in the north than the south uh, called uh, UHT, ultra high temperature pasteurization. And UHT milk uh, can last a month or longer. What I do is I get deliveries and because I buy mix once and then I do two of these classes, two or three, uh, I freeze it. And so, because I'm not using it that often, but mix can be frozen. So we've got um, nothing in here. Is the, is the sugar already in here? Yes. Okay. So we got the. Dissolved. I see it's dissolved. It's a beautiful job. It's a beautiful thing. Um, so I've got the sugar and water. Actually, I'm going to pour in the base, this stuff. The what? The base. Mango base. Yeah. Why don't you put a little in here, rinse this out, so we can get the rest of it. Okay. There we go. Good, good, good. Okay, so I've got the speed on, the refrigeration on, set a timer. Now, I didn't explain this morning the infinite overrun control. It's something I invented uh, 12 years ago. The difference between homemade ice cream that Jeff is making, super premium, haagen and gelato is basically the air content. The less air in the product, the heavier the product. So we have the only machine in the world that you can adjust the air content. See how it cuts off? This is ready. Now the, per the idea yeah, is to make... Be going to get it out. The idea is to make it as consistent as possible, so we want to get it out as fast as possible. Okay. Boy, that's yeah. delicious. Overrun is the amount of air in the product. If you have... Oh. Uh. Uh. And you say you run Why do machines. you put this on here? So that you won't do that? No, that's why it happens. That's why it's there, uh. so you won't do it. Uh. Um, we'll just ignore him. You, you, you're going to lose an arm. Come on up and try this. It's delicious. It really is delicious. Yeah, see, you're getting a little slower now. <laughs> you're starting to go, oh, God, more products. That's why you were talking. <laughs> There's the excuse, guy. Right. Okay, last chance before you leave. Jeff's book. Oh, you'd have to talk to him. Okay, we're done. What you should do, by the way, is you should take his factory tour. Now you do, you're giving it right? right now. You should take the factory tour because you'll see how the machine is built, and then you'll have the whole picture. If you come to my class, you'll have the really whole picture. That's it, another story. Thank you very much for coming. We, we had a good time. And uh, any questions, just call here. Uh, you'll get Crystal on the phone. You'll get Connie. You'll get Paula. And uh, I'll give you a quick tour of the place. How are we doing?
Before we close for the day, I'd just like to announce a few exciting new things that we're going to do here at Make It Fresh. In the uh, coming seminars, uh, we're going to change things up a bit. Instead of me deciding what we're going to make, we're going to ask you to decide what you'd like to see made. To that end, uh, to the participants who are here and are uh, uh, watching the performance live, uh, we'll contact them in advance and ask them what they would like to see being made. Also, we're going to send out uh, uh, a large email request and ask you what you'd like to see. Or just send me an email at steve at emerythompson.com and tell me what you'd like to see me make, uh, whether it be Italian ices, frozen lemonade, frozen yogurt, uh, gelato, premium ice cream, homemade ice cream, anything you want to see, we'll see if we can't work it in. We're also going to get more heavily into uh, asking questions. Uh, we're also going to have uh, more guest uh, speakers come and tell you about their particular field. But as far as the questions, um, we're going to just try to answer anything that comes up. So if you have a question starting right now, email it to me, and we'll most likely uh, fit it into the next seminar and answer it. Uh, we have a new employee here at Emory Thompson that I'm going to introduce for the first time today, and she will be assisting me with the questions her name is Samantha Jane Thompson. We call her Sammy. And hi, Sammy. Oh, and you brought me a question to answer. This is my wife, Paula, our office manager. Hello. All right, Sammy, uh, uh, let's see. Um, the answer is Jimmy Fallon. So let's see. You think I'm right? Yes. All right, let's, let's see what the answer was. Jimmy Fallon. And the question is, where did Sammy first appear on TV? Well, when she was uh, only six weeks old, she appeared on Jimmy Fallon with Sonia Heidek. And if you want to see the tape, uh, you can just go to Jimmy, Google Jimmy Fallon and Pup Quiz, P-U-P -P, as in puppy, Pup <laughs> Quiz, and you can see the tape. Now, they'll be calling the dogs different names, but one of them is uh, Samantha. Uh, I couldn't tell you which one. Uh, it's a little hard to, to, to know. Uh, but they're all cute, and that was the first time that Sammy showed up on TV. And who knows, maybe with uh, a little coaxing as she gets bigger and bigger, you'll watch her grow over the next uh, large number of seminars. Maybe she'll bring this in on her own. What do you think? Think you can do that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're off to a good start. So thanks for watching today, and we'll see you very soon. Give me that. Give me that. <laughs>